Hello and welcome once again to The Blueprints. This is Canada's Conservative Podcast. I'm your host, Jamie Schmale, Member of Parliament for Halliburton, Kawartha Lakes, Brock, with new content for you every single Tuesday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We ask that you like, subscribe, comment, and share this program. Of course, as always, if you can't listen to this program in its entirety right this second, please download it, listen to it on platforms like CastBox, iTunes, Google Play, and Spotify, you name it, it is out there. Another great show lined up for you today. And remember, we did ask you to share this program. We do that because C11, the internet censorship law brought in by the Liberal NDP government is now in effect. And to talk about that and much, much more, we have Michelle Rempel-Gardner, Member of Parliament, Calgary, Nose Hill. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. It's great to have you on. Yeah. I'm pretty excited about yeah, that. Yeah, me too. All right. So internet censorship is, uh, is oh. in full effect here. We're, we're dealing with the ramifications. We need to share this program. Uh, but also you're doing your own work as well. You're reaching out to platforms like Substack, kind of getting uh, the conservative message out in, in different forms. Yeah, so I'm, I'm so glad you raised this. Um, I think Canadians really need to understand what's happened. So just a couple days ago, there's this headline in the Canadian press where it says Meta, so Facebook's mm -hmm. parent company, that they're starting to actually prepare to block news as liberal censorship bill C-18 prepares to pass. Not just, it's crazy, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think the message that we need to send to people who are listening to this is that, you know, conservative members of parliament, we're working, as you said, as you're doing right here, to get the message out, to talk about the work that we're doing in ways that the liberals maybe haven't thought of That's as exactly part of right. yes. censorship bills. And so, yeah, I'm writing long form pieces on a platform called Substack. Um, the link for people who are interested is just my name, michellerempelgarner.ca. And the reason I'm doing that is exactly what you said. It's that we're facing these censorship bills and we need to inform Canadians mm -hmm. about what's happening here, even though, like at the Liberal Party convention this weekend, oh right, my goodness. they passed no, this resolution. Yes. Basically, we had the CBC come out against the Liberal Party resolution. That's how, <laughs> that's how bad it was. That's how bad it was, where they said that essentially they were going to censor journalists in so many different ways. And like, you kind of think like, oh, this is too crazy to happen, mm -hmm. except then you look at C18, C11. So yes, Substack, michellerempelgarner.ca, I'm writing long form pieces about what's happening in Ottawa, an amazing uptake. Um, 33,000 people have subscribed to date. Um, and I think we need to have more people subscribing to your, like your show that you're doing today here. Um, these other forms where we know that we can not necessarily have to apply to those yes. rules that they want to see us adhere to. Absolutely. And that's why we need to subscribe to these like the Substack, this program and many yes. others because you are notified when when things go live and new content is put on and that way you're able to share in their social media network, right? Such that's how you point. grow the message. It's such a great point. So I think for people who are watching to understand, even before these bills came into play, right? Um, Facebook, Twitter, you know, they had these algorithms mm -hmm. that downvoted, upvoted certain types of content. Now this is codified in Canadian legislation with C18, C, uh, C11. And so it's so important to be part of things called subscriber networks, right? So mm -hmm. we have social media. Subscriber networks are when you subscribe to somebody's content and then to your point, you get a notification either an email or on an app or something that you're not just being dependent on a algorithm to see the content. Um, or the government, as the, <laughs> is the case. And we laugh, but it's, yeah. just, it's so mind-boggling. It's, it's mind-boggling so it happening, right? It is really important to have that direct contact, uh, contact with the person that you're, you know, you're interacting with, and that's why I'm writing more on Substack. I think that's a fa fabulous idea. And, and, and just to go back quickly to what the hell was happening at the Liberal Convention in this past weekend, there, which was surprising, and, yeah. and many people my, I brought attention to it, that there wasn't many people pushing back against this ever-moving censorship crawl that we get. Liberals yeah. used to stand for liberty for crying out loud. I know. I think that there's this, you know, the Liberal Party, they think people are dumb, right? That they're too dumb mm -hmm. to think for themselves, that they can't evaluate information, and that somehow the government has to have um, a role in this and in and, and determining what's truth. You know, they go into it with these sort of like noble overtones, like, oh, we're protecting you from yourselves. But in reality, and what we've seen in practice with this government, because like, you know, even the CBC are talking about how this is the most, the least transparent government in Canadian mm -hmm. history. They censor these things. And this isn't a noble purpose. This is a, 
this is a direct attempt by the government to control what journalists can say, what you and I and people who are watching can see. And it's so important that Canadians of all political stripe push back against this. But and you know, you know, I'd ask you, I don't know, did you see Liberal Minister Seamus O'Regan tweet after this convention? Yes, about uh, <laughs> it was like, don't a worry, Freedom of the Press fine. Day too, or yeah. Freedom of the Press Week or yeah. Nothing to yeah. see here. <laughs> That's right, we got this. Don't and worry. literally, you know, you just yeah. see the ratio on that tweet oh, yeah. of people of all political stripe being like, sure, buddy. <laughs> yeah, <that's right>. You <laughs> know, uh, like the big wink. Yeah. Uh, I but it's not a laughing matter. This is they really do have mm -hmm. an agenda to hide information from the public. You see it in question period, they don't answer questions. No. You ask, you can't get information out of access to information requests. Even our parliamentary order paper questions, these formal legislative tools, they completely ignore. So we have to fight back against this because it really does erode our democracy. I'm so glad you're talking about this. I think it's really important. Well, I'm glad you're able to come. I love what you're doing on Substack too. I think that's very important. So this end endless gaslighting that we keep getting, right? Oh. Okay, let's talk about this question period. Anybody that's watched question period knows what we're talking yes. about. The it, it, all the scandals, SNC Lavalin, all the way to what we're dealing with now, potential interference in our elections with Beijing, intimidation of a member of parliament's family back in Hong yeah. Kong, that the gaslighting is, is absolutely unreal. And to your point about what Seamus Regan said, basically we're censoring the internet, some of our policies are leaning in the direction of actually censoring journalists and what they can publish, but hey, let's celebrate Press Freedom Day. Like, yeah. it, it's absolutely incredible. It's. I love that term because it's so accurate, gaslighting. That's actually what they do, right? Like you'll get up in the House of Commons, ask a question, and then they try to deflect with some sort of lie mm -hmm. about um, whoever's asking the question or whatever because they just want to, you know, change the channel because they've usually messed up so badly. The, the problem with this, it's really serious. Like this isn't a game. Um, First of all, it erodes trust in public institutions, right? Mm -hmm. Like anybody, no matter how they vote, would look at that behavior and go, what, is, what do they have to hide? And, you know, at a time when we're seeing so much instability, unaffordability, mm -hmm. like where Canadians do need to band together and trust, you've got this government that's doing everything to divide Canadians and to... Again. And it's that's exactly what happens. And these are you know, as you talked about this foreign interference issue, these have major mm -hmm. ramifications on Canada's pluralism, on our unity as a country, and they transcend partisanship. And for them to just, again, gaslight, it's such an accurate term. I think it just, it's so dangerous. And certainly I know our party, you know, all of our colleagues, they've been working so hard to hold the government to account. And um, again, it's hard with the Liberal NDP coalition, but you know, it, it still is a noble and important mm -hmm. cause for us to fight, and we are making progress. Did you ever think there'd be a point in Canada, in Canada, when members of Parliament doing their work on the floor of the House of Commons, their most important task is voting on behalf of their constituents, potentially being threatened with family living elsewhere, in this case of Michael Chong back in Hong Kong, the government knowing about it, and not actually doing anything about it to maybe warn the individual that this is potentially going on. That in Canada, like, like, how did you feel when you heard that? Because like, I was, I'm, I was just, I was speechless. For, but and then I got angry. Yeah. yeah, because you're right. It's supposed to be nonpartisan. We're all supposed to be in that House of Commons working together. We may not always agree, but at the same time, we're elected to do the job of representing our constituents and to be potentially facing intimidation from foreign governments or threats to your family back home, it's, it's hard to do your job when you got that on the back of your mind too. You know, I, I love that, I think you and I have shared the same reaction, anger. Mm -hmm. So I think the first story that came out about this was about a week and a half ago. It's this really long, detailed article by Bob Fife and Steve Chase of the Globe and Mail, which ironically they wouldn't have been able to publish if the amendment that the Liberals proposed this last weekend was in place. That's a very good point. Um, but I'll just share like a very personal story about this. So I read that article and embedded in it was a line that said um, that the Calgary consulate of the government in Beijing had tried to in influence a prominent Calgary MP through a third party. And it was just one line like that. And my first response was, is that me? Did this happen to me? How would I know? Who would it have been? And then you start going through in your head like you know conversations that you have with people. And in that moment, I felt anger 
and I felt shame because I'm having to wonder about people that I've interacted with that are Canadian citizens that are part of my community yeah. and I don't think that that's been talked enough about is the fact that the Liberals not being on top of this, ignoring it, pretending it's not a problem, mm -hmm. being weak on it. It actually, like, we are a diverse country. My riding, you know, 20% of my community identify um, with Chinese heritage. To not have things like a foreign agent registry where there's rules like mm -hmm. corporate lobbying on how people can engage with legislators, what that does is it, it leads to like a witch hunt. Yes. Right? And it actually destroys our pluralism. It actually erodes that trust we have within our community that you and I are entrusted to protect. And for the liberals to ignore that and then purport to stand for Canadian unity, for diversity, it's actually disgusting. And I feel I feel ashamed that like in that moment I had like that thought like who did I talk to was it me all these things and that's exactly what our foes abroad want us to do that's what they want us to do is they want us yeah. to have this divisive questioning each other not trusting yeah, yeah, yeah. of course that because yeah. when we're divided we're not united yeah. we're not focused on our sovereignty we're not focused on advancing our interests as a country and for the liberals to say no they voted against a motion yesterday, mm -hmm. that foreign agent registry. Shameful. Absolutely shameful. shameful. Um, so, you know, I think it's just going to be so important for Canadians to unite around this issue, regardless of how people vote. They need to be holding their government to account. And frankly, I think the Liberal members, you know, they lost an opportunity this weekend at their convention to hold their leader to account, yep. to demand better within their party. So, um, you know, a really, um, I think, a sobering week. Oh, absolutely. And they finally, thankfully, the, the government finally kicked out that diplomat uh, kind of tied to, into all of this. Finally, after years, potentially two years of knowing about this, finally. I want to get your reaction. I've asked a few people about this, but I want to get your reaction because you served in cabinet under Harper. Reverse the headline for a second. Harper knew two years ago about Chinese interference. Potentially nine liberal seats were lost because of Chinese interference. A liberal member of parliament their family was threatened elsewhere because of potential interference from another country, Beijing. What do you think the reaction will be? You know, Jamie, I, I, I hope that the reaction, no matter what, would, would be equal. Well, that's the way it's supposed you to know, be. That's I, why I wanted to ask you. That's, I, you know, that's the way it's supposed I, I, to be. It, it should be because, like, again, like, this isn't, you know, we're always going to have our partisan fights mm -hmm. in the House and disagreements about policy, but our country, we lose our sovereignty. Yeah when we lose that integrity in our democratic institutions. And that's really what's at stake here. You know, I, I don't, the government has been through seven foreign ministers. I think seven, right? But, uh, pretty darn close. Six, yeah, seven. Yeah. Like, it's bad that yeah. we, we, we don't know. <laughs> yeah. They don't have a consistent foreign policy. Yeah. You had Justin Trudeau coming out, you know, time and time again saying that, you know, he can't, there is no national identity. We do have a national identity as Canadians. We are a sovereign nation. We're, you, you know, you, we're united in our pluralism. We're united in so many different things. But the fact that he can't even muster the courage to say we don't have a national identity, mm -hmm. seven foreign ministers, how, how, of course we can't be expected, he can't be expected to defend any of those things. So yeah, like I love the question, how, what would the reaction be? It, you know, this should be bigger than politics. Yes. And this was a, actually, this right. was a, like just speaking as a pundit, this was a moment for him as a leader to rise yeah. to the occasion. And instead, he just. Like when we were. Yeah. Like flopped, like caved. And I think, I think it was actually a moment where a lot of liberals, you could see it in the, did you see their backbench? Yeah, they, they didn't look up very much. They no. were, they weren't clapping. They weren't energized. So I hope they find their, their backbones. Yeah, that would be kind of nice. That's kind of nice. One thing I also want to talk about, because I know time is getting short, <laughs> is uh, your speech, I guess, uh, last week in the House of Commons. Um, you're talking about the affordability issue, something everyone is, is talking about. It's hitting in every quarter of the country. I don't care where you live. Um, you're talking about paying more and getting less, which I think is a theme I think is, is coming home to roost for this, for this government. The bureaucracy has gotten bigger. The results are getting slower. Mm -hmm and yet people are being asked to pay even more to subsidize all of this. Yeah. Where's the value for money? It's a great question, right? Yeah. Like, I think, you know, if you reached across our caucus and you talked to people, 
the one thing that really unifies us I, is a care for Canadians mm -hmm. and like an understanding that like they're going through some really trying times with regard to cost of living, rent, mortgages, paying for groceries, fuel. And where the Liberals are at on that issue is they come out and they're announcing spending. Like, well, we're spending all of these extra tax dollars. We're spending, we're spending. more. That's the measure for success. We're spending yeah. more. But yet Canadians are getting less service. And the same thing is happening in their homes, right? You know, people are spending more and getting less, and that that stress, that anxiety mm -hmm. from that from that like decreasing ability to to make ends meet. I, I like you know, wages aren't increasing. People aren't like like the cost of housing isn't decreasing. It's it's really hard. I, I mean, in my community, I have seen so many people like they're just right on the edge Jamie I, I'm sure it is the same with you like they can barely afford to pay the mortgage yeah. um, you know I was talking to someone who's pretty close to me about friends that they have that you know they they just managed to buy a house but like they can't go out like they went to a friend's birthday party and like couldn't even afford to buy a soda you know yeah. and I that hits home like that's the reality for many Canadians and I just this liberal fallacy that we should be paying more to get less mm -hmm. and somehow be excited, like excited, <laughs> yeah, right. like, hey. oh, oh, we're spending more paying and More taxes less. is moral, yeah. Um, I don't think they understand the, the, that anxiety. And, you know, I, I think the one thing that has really united us as a caucus is that, mm -hmm. that feeling, like understanding that feeling and then trying to really push back against it with positive policies, like, you know, some of the uh, housing affordability mm -hmm. policies we've put forward, skilled trades training, I could go on and on. But um, we've got a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. Well, we've this government decries people's wealth, and you know we want everyone to obviously do the best they can and have equal opportunity. But they're the ones that always want all the wealth, right? To to squander it away. And we saw yeah, that they have no problem spending they what no billions problem. on yeah. McKinsey and these absolutely. guys. Absolutely. Like, yeah, it, the it's nice cocktail incredible. parties. Nice cocktail. Absolutely, I love being seen at the, the awards ceremony. They went to New York City to hang with uh, Hugh Jackman and I others. Know, who doesn't that want to be with Wolverine on a free <laughs> vacation? It's kind of <laughs> right? cool in New York City. But and that's not fiction. their job. But that's not your job. Absolutely. But to to the same point, to your neck of the woods, that's been decimated under this this liberal government. We have countries like uh, Japan and and Germany that are coming to Canada asking for our energy and then being told there's no business case. That's that's crazy. Like we had the German yeah. government like in Canada didn't make any news. Barely, like, yeah. yeah. Like like what did we get out of that? We had a state visit from one of the world's biggest yeah. economies. Japanese prime minister was here. That's and that, like everyone's what? Yeah. It's crazy. I, right? They're crazy. And then they go crazy to, I think it was Japan, or no, sorry, uh, Germany went to Qatar and had a multi billion dollar contract yep. to supply that energy. So, another way to lower prices is to add supply. Yep. Add supply. And then we have hindered our ability to do just that. Uh, there's just, you know, it's, it's time for a change. Like, I, I think, you know, we've gone through so many elections. You and I have gone through a lot of mm -hmm. elections together. And this one is just so. It's for all the marbles. Yeah, you know, if Trudeau says he's going to run again. He does not deserve to govern again. I it's time for a more. change. I always give the, la the guests the last <laughs> word, but it's hard to really come back from that. <laughs> but I, uh, the floor is yours if you can top that. That was pretty good. Just thanks for having me, Jamie. Thanks for all the work you do to get the work out. And to those who are listening today, thanks to them for, for listening and being open to, to hearing beyond what the liberals would have them hear through their censorship bills. Always great to have you here. Thanks. Michelle Rimple garner Member of Parliament for Calgary Nose Hill. We appreciate her time. We appreciate your time as well. Please, as Michelle just mentioned, as we just mentioned, like, comment, and subscribe, and share this program. Of course, you can download it, listen to it on platforms like CastBox, iTunes, Google Play, and Spotify. Remember, tell your friends about it, because there's new content every single Tuesday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Until next week, we say remember, it's low taxes, less government, more freedom. That's the blueprint.